This is the story of one woman's struggle to heal the pain of innocence lost. How could the hands that changed my diapers stab this woman to death? Coming to grips with a dark legacy no one wants to admit. I remember thinking, I'm the daughter of the devil. And trying to heal the sins of the father. Jen Carson lives every day the same way I do, knowing her father is a serial killer. Jen is the daughter of Michael Carson, a strange macabre man who was one half of an evil couple nicknamed the San Francisco Witch Killers. You're the first daughter of a serial killer I've met. My dad, Keith Hunter Jesperson, murdered at least eight people. He was called the Happy Face Killer. Dad earned his nickname by drawing little smiley faces on the letters he wrote about his killings. One thing that we have in common is we're both daughters of a serial killer, which is really, really rare. I think when you were a kid, you told me that you looked it up, what the odds are. Right. You know, when I was young, I felt so alone. I remember doing research, and I realized that I was more likely to have a parent who died by being struck by lightning than have a parent that was a serial killer. Jen tells me she was raised in an unconventional but loving home in Phoenix, Arizona. So your mom was a school teacher, and your dad was a stay-at-home slash pot dealer. Yeah, that's what he did. <laughs> You know, I had preschool once I got in trouble. We were playing house and I was rolling joints. So that was my concept of normal. Those days of normal were short lived. Although you were really young, do you remember any changes in your father? I remember them being very loving with each other um, for a short period of time, but then they began fighting and the fights would be screaming and yelling and them kind of throwing things. I found myself slapping him back. He hit me really hard while I was holding a glass. I threw it on, a, on the floor, and the shard flew towards Jennifer and nicked her in the arm. Jen's mother, Lynn, had enough. She took her, moved out, and divorced Michael. A few months later, he showed up with a strange new girlfriend named Suzanne. People talk about Charlie Manson eyes and how some people look frightening, and to me, she looked frightening. The hippie couple made no apologies for their bizarre counterculture lifestyle. In her brief visits with her father and Suzanne, Jen remembers their rapid descent into drugs and madness. That must have been frightening as a young girl. Yeah, you know, I'm the small child and the environment is scary. Jen told me she will never forget her last childhood visit with her dad and Suzanne. It almost turned deadly. I had asked her to, scratch, uh, to rub my back before I went to bed, and um, she scratched my back and said she was gonna get the demon out of me. There were uh, five red marks from all five fingernails, and two were open wounds. But more frightening to me than the injury was what she was saying. You know, I, you can fool your father, but I know you're the devil, and I'm gonna get this demon out of you. Then I knew I had to get me, especially my daughter, out of his life completely. A few years later, Michael and Suzanne moved to the hippie capital of the world, San Francisco's Haight-Ashbury district. They were sharing an apartment with inspiring actress, 22-year-old Karen Barnes. Karen had no idea Michael and Suzanne had marked her for death. They believed this beautiful woman was an evil witch. They stated that, um, that God had told them to kill witches. Um, and um, gays and abortionists and, you know, these long lists of people. Karen's mutilated body was found in the basement of their apartment. Michael and Suzanne vanished. They took off on a deadly rampage and murdered two more people in Northern California. After an intense manhunt, they were arrested. Poor Jen was only eight years old, but her days of innocence were over. And I said, Jenny, I have something to tell you, and it's not good. And she said, you know, um, remember I told you that daddy was very sick, um, and um, we have now found out he got more sick, and he hurt a bunch of people, and they're dead. And he's in jail, so he doesn't hurt himself or anyone else. As you came to learn more information, mm -hmm. how did you take it? Fairly soon after, um, I found newspaper articles in the house. And I remember the word bludgeon because I didn't know what it meant. But I read the other words and I was able to figure out that it said that they'd stabbed her in the neck 12 times 
and they hit her over the head. And that's when my lifelong struggle with nightmares began. Well, let's return to our story now. And Jen Carson's father is a convicted serial killer. And right now, she's about to meet face to face with one of his victims' families. Our special correspondent, Melissa Moore, whose own father is known as the happy face killer, was there. As a little girl, Jen Carson, like me, and most other little girls, adored her father. I felt so loved by my daddy. Then, at the tender age of eight, her mother broke the shocking news that he had just been arrested. She was devastated. And Jen tells me she was absolutely shattered when her mom told her it was murder. It was just too much for her. It was almost impossible for little Jen to believe that the man she called daddy was a serial killer. Police say Michael Carson began a murder spree in San Francisco that ended with the violent deaths of three people. A little part of her was destroyed. That little part called innocence. I instantly thought this world is a really scary place. I've been in that very same scary place. At 15, I found out my daddy was the infamous happy face killer. And here we are. And here we are. And you know, and so, um, but it's been many years that we've never talked to anyone or had anyone who can fathom what we've been through. Jen and I have both suffered through feelings of guilt for the misery our fathers have caused. It's taken us both to some very dark places. I remember thinking, I'm the daughter of the devil. You know, I, I must just be evil. And I was gonna probably hurt people too. Then when she was 23, Jen went to one dark place she had never been before. A place she had never wanted to go, but knew she had to. I had nightmares and I was just a disaster. And I thought, I've had enough of this. I'm gonna go see him. I just want closure. And so I hopped in a car and I went to Folsom. Folsom Prison. Jen's heart was pounding as she waited in the visiting area to see her father for the first time in nearly 15 years. I felt very, uh, very scared. Her dad was now 50 and a man she barely knew. And during that visit, um, he talked for about three hours straight and during his rambling and frightening tirade, Jen's dad confessed why he murdered one of his victims. He messed with my wife, um, Susan, and so, you know, I shot him and I burned his body. From that very moment, Jen cut all ties with her dad. But this brave young woman is reaching out to the families her father hurt. I was there when Jen came face to face with the sister of her father's first murder victim. I'm really sorry that, um, that you lost such a beautiful person, that your sister's gone. Why'd you reach out to, to Lisa? Starting from the time I was um, about nine, when I knew the details of um, your sister's death, um, I kept having uh, nightmares that your mom would be on a porch and she'd be holding this frame picture of Karen. And um, I would go try to hug her and I couldn't. I thought, you know, I could finally reach out to this family I've wanted to hug and just share that, um, that I care. You know my family has no animosity towards you. We don't hold you responsible. We, you, you can't help what he did. Right. You can't. Yeah. You are your own person and your life goes on. My life goes on. All of our lives go on. Yeah. And you're okay. For myself, it was very terrifying to reach out to my father's victims, family members. Some of them didn't want to meet with me, which I respect, but it did hurt. Were you prepared for that? Yes, absolutely. She's terrified and it was important to me to answer her back immediately and let her know it's okay. I knew that I had to step up to the plate. I just felt really, really committed to, to doing this. Jen Carson and I will forever be haunted as daughters of serial killers. But I'm so incredibly proud of Jen. She's doing her best to help others recover from her father's evil. I think that the relationship that I have with, with Lisa is, you know, something that's incredibly healing to focus on, you know, helping others.